Good evening. I am Mio Nanjo, Senior Advisor of Murray Art Museum. This year, around the world, we have the witnessed we have witnessed the breakout of uh, COVID-19, which uh, transformed our life. And uh, give, giving consideration to this fact, we set up the theme for this year's program, namely Pandemic and Innovation, Innovative City. This uh, session is broken into three themes, and we are going to have the second day under this art and science in session. This art, uh, art and science session is uh, made up of three themes, namely understanding, mutual understanding, and creation. So we are going to spend this second day for the purpose of deepening the discussion on understanding in light of uh, our day-to-day -day life and from the viewpoint of uh, what kind of a judgment that should be rendered. I think everything around this kind of topic has been transformed uh, to a great extent. To what direction, in what direction we are going to move in terms of the world, science, art, design, from those perspectives, how the world is going to develop, and what is the meaning which we can get out of uh, this situation. And that is the purpose of the session we would like and to host today. We have uh, the moderator once again, um, the Professor uh, Akihiro Kubota, Professor of Department of Information Design, Tama Art University. So over to you, Professor Kubota. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Kubota. As uh, Nanjo-san explained today, we are going to have the second day of art and science in session. Yesterday, understanding. Well, uh, in fact, uh, those two days are going to be dedicated to the topic of understanding and the possibility of understanding. That was the theme. Uh, that is the theme. We have uh, uh, Mr. Hoshino and Mr. James Bridal. Those were the panelists who appeared in this session yesterday and uh, technology and uh, corporality. Those are the topics that were taken up uh, for the yesterday session. Now, we have the second day session, as you can see in the title, Living in the World of Plural Understanding. What does this mean? In English, as you can see, you will understand what it means. Understanding, in some sense, means across different uh, segments and science and art, there are different uh, interpretations. And therefore, there are different forms of understanding. They need to coexist. Is it possible to achieve that? And if that is possible, what needs to be done? This is the topic we are going to take up for today's uh, session. Art and science, and those are the key words, in particular this time, uh, 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 the status of COVID-19, the pandemic, and uh, what we are seeing and what we are doing. For example, today, we are using the screen uh, on the Zoom. So this is related to perception and the reality that we are going to get out of it. And the, then comes the understanding based on all those factors. And on top of that, today's topic is going to be related and to the topic that was introduced by Mr. Uh, Bridal for example, around ourselves, the computers and networks and smartphones, we have uh, a very, we are living very close to the computation world. And out of this uh, machine learning, AI, they are coming out of this. And then the infection uh, prediction in the case of uh, COVID-19, they are making inroad in our day-to-day -day life. So we are surrounded by computation. How is the world going to develop? In particular, a computation is closely linked with the thinking, prediction linked with intelligence. And at, at, at the outset, as I mentioned, the society is going to be pluralized. And how is this going to be uh, make advance into this kind of a plural world or pluriverse? So with that, uh, we have uh, three panelists and the speakers um, from the different backgrounds. And uh, first, uh, Mr. Uh, Aoji-san, Feldi Aoji-san, and George aoji The second speaker is uh, the board member of Desho Games Research Association, Mr. Yuichiro Miyake. 
And then the third speaker is uh, Doc, uh, Professor Aiko Hibino uh, from the uh, Hirosaki University. So with these uh, different backgrounds, those uh, three speakers are going to make presentations. And following the presentations, we are going to engage in discussion. Uh, with regard to the impressions and the comments, and that can uh, be provided um, by the, the viewers, um, please use the Slido function, uh, which is located on the right side of the screen. Please uh, drop any comments. Uh, first, uh, I would like to give the floor uh, to aoji -san. Over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the, uh, I would like to thank you to the, the team. It is so, so nice uh, gathering. Uh, so uh, this is honor for us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed to do our presentation. And now we will start uh, for 15 minutes, a uh, quick uh, presentation uh, about uh, the, the our project, which is Integrate Art, Science and Technology. So let me share to my screen, the first of all. The, 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 all all uh, projects, uh, um, uh, 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 the, actually this sentence is exactly describing to our vision. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysteries. It is source of all true art and all science. The Albert Einstein uh, said that. That sentence is exactly describing to the, our vision. So we are out, uh, we, we, we are a kind of new media studio. Uh, the V1, a couple of awards like uh, Red Dot Design Award, ADS Award, German Design Award, and the uh, International Design Award uh, from Los Angeles, New York, Germany, um, uh, and then the, the, the Euro uh, Asia Design Award. We want to the Asia Design Award. So basically, uh, we're we, we interesting to the, the new media field. What does meaning? We integrate art, science, and technology for every work. Uh, our main office in Istanbul, but we have a partnership Berlin, Vienna, Los Angeles, and Barcelona. By the way, everyone can see my screen, right? Every, everything is okay. Is it okay? Everyone can see my screen, right? Okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, until now, uh, the, we created approximately 50 art pieces around the world uh, for 50 cities and countries, approximately for every continent. Uh, we built the desk studio approximately 10 years ago in Istanbul. We graduated the uh, visual communication design department from the Bilgi University in Istanbul. Our professors uh, were Isan Derman, Isan Karol, Orhan Cemce team. That professors uh, have uh, so visionary people. Uh, they, they they teach. They teach the. They, they are teaching to the, the that vision in this field. Um, now uh, we collaborated with the CERN. As as you know, CERN is a kind of the scientific place, a world biggest particle collider place. But at the same time, uh, they tr they are trying to understand the universe with a uh, scientific experiential, but uh, its place uh, also museum. So we created uh, a kind of the data installation for their places. That data about the, the, the topographical data from the cities. We transformed that topographical data as an art piece. Uh, uh, so this piece, it means every time changing according to city, every time. We already exhibit to do that uh, art piece around the world for every science museum, for every planetarium. Then after that, uh, TEDx CERN invited us to the for the making the another scientific installation. Uh, we we used the, the particle physics concept uh, for this installation. We covered the, the a kind of the geodesic dome with the projectors, so you you could experience the particle physics um, on the just one simple dot. By the way, the, we we already exhibit around the world like a Tokyo. 
uh, and then the, the Melbourne, for example, this one is the Melbourne edition. We create a 20 meter diameter version and we put the middle of the city. It looks like a hacking doll, that city, with the art and science. Approximately 650,000 people experience in just one night. And as you know, the Alan Turing published a paper. That paper, um, the Alan Turing asked the can machine think. So this, this, that was so inspiring question for us. We asked the same question with different senses for our next art installation, like uh, can machine listen or can machine learn or can machine create. So for this project, uh, the, our biggest question was, can we create super scientist consciousness by using machine learning and AI algorithm? We, um, uh, the Atelier de Lumière invited us to for making uh, the, the hybrid uh, installation in the Paris. Uh, we transformed the uh, 3,500 square meter as an immersive experience area. When you enter the that area, you can experience the crimped brush and paints in just one hole. As you know, the crimped uh, cult name about uh, uh, traditional art. But after the 15 minutes, we are using the data as a paint, algorithm as a brush. So uh, after the 15 minutes, this is literally our biggest AI exhibition in Paris. We used 146 projectors in just one hole. Let me let me explain to the, the behind the creation. We collected huge data uh, about the famous scientist book, like uh, Einstein, Hawking books. And that, that book's about uh, physics, time, space, you know, quantum. Uh, when, we, when we collected that data, we created a kind of digital library made by 20 million lines books. Our AI algorithm, the reading that digital library approximately 30 times, then after that, uh, create the own book and sentences. So we collected the that data from the AI for making that cinematic experience. It was it was a very interesting moment for the audience because it looks like uh, hanging around the inside of the machine brain, literally. And then it was the so nice experience for the audience because of the it is a huge contrast between the two experiences. One of them the so colorful, so traditional art about the art history. The other one is the just black and white and so digital, made by AI. It means the future of the art in the same canvas. That exhibition was so successful. Approximately one million people experienced in nine months by tickets in the Paris. That was the huge uh, success. By the way, uh, we also created the book version of the dead AI because of, you know, people deserve the reading to that AI outputs. It looks like, uh, by the way, hacking to all that city. And um, that's, the, the, that's the scientific uh, the creation chart for this exhibition. We call it the poetic AI. The left side and top side, you can see that we use the TensorFlow uh, and RNN. Um, all AI reading to all that 20 million lines books and rendering new sentences. At the same time, we are getting to that sentences to the, our animation structure in real time. Then after that, going to the wall and ceiling with the projectors. The other one is the TC algorithm, the, the top and right side. That algorithm trying to make the meaningful connection between 20 million lines and create the new words, AI words. So that, that's the, uh, the famous one chart for the explanation. The, this is the book version. So it means you can, uh, you can read as a book all that AI creation. And by the way, when we, when we made to that exhibition, it looks like an uh, uh, impactful reaction from the audience. We featured on news newspaper. For example, this one is the French 24 uh, interview. Then after that, TEDx CERN invited us to for making same installation in the Sweden for their prestige event. By the way, every day you can see the deadline front of the door. Uh, it's now we created another installation in Bordeaux. Uh, we, we use the Atlas Ocean data for immersive experience. The people can observe, can experience uh, the Atlas Ocean as an epic 
as immersive experience in their city. We, we really love to do using the city data as an art piece. For example, this one is the climate change data from the base. About 40 years, the carbon emission, uh, and then environmental data, we collected in that data for the last 40 years and created uh, a kind of permanent public art piece for their new district. As you know, the city gave us uh, too many uh, the valuable data for using to, as an art piece in publicly. There are too many competitional process in our studio. I mean, we, we, we have a, the best computer, CPU, GPU, and we, we have a, the best uh, the, you know, the algorithms for making the, that kind of art installation. So people can see to the unseen data from the dead cities as an art piece. For example, this one is there. We created the world first astronomical research, data architecture, sculpture, public art in China and in Nanjing, which is the oldest city. We collected the huge data from the NASA. We collaborated with the NASA for this installation. We used the exoplanet data archive from the Kepler telescope. And we collaborate with the, the, the real scientists from the NASA, Dom Gelino. Uh, she is astrophysicist and she is working with the NASA and she is exactly director of the that data set. So can you imagine infinite possibilities of collaboration with scientists for hybrid AI public art? For this installation, we created 12, 12 meter high and 360 experience uh, for daytime and nighttime and 15 ton heavy made by LED screens. And all that data sculpture animations coming from the AI. Uh, so we created approximately 20 different type of data sculpture animations using the AI. The one of them generative adversarial network machine hallucination algorithm from the Google. Uh, we use the starlight data for these data sculptures. And then we created our own AI algorithm for making new imaginary planets from the Kepler telescope. So the, the, this is actually very epic and poetic experience for the audience. We're trying to do the, the putting the space discovery as an art piece in publicly like this. And then that's the construction process. And then that's the final result. You can experience for 10 years. This is actually living architecture. And then the, this is the, uh, the, our last piece for the showing. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for showing us um, the voluminous uh, introduction of your artworks. The next speaker is uh, Mr. Miyake, who is a game developer. I think, as introduced by Ouch, I think um, the system that underlies uh, the artworks are AI and others, and he is going to talk about that. Thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Miyake. And today, I would like uh, to talk about uh, the digital um, technology and AI. And I think uh, I have been engaged uh, in the development of AI starting in 12 and 2015. For example, that uh, the Sony's uh, uh, game uh, machines. Well, speaking of AI, not only games, um, but also it should be a real-time interactive experience to be offered uh, to the users. Therefore, it is not only a matter of uh, what ha is happening in computing uh, inside the machine or a server, but uh, it is uh, living at the same time with the human beings. Therefore, not only games, but agent services, uh, robots, uh, and drones, uh, these applications as well. With regard to AI exploration, I think uh, it uh, syncs uh, with the human brains and human intelligence. Uh, what does it mean? I think if you look deeper into uh, that side, you can travel a uh, distance. Uh, and science is going to be explored, and uh, based on the scientific results, that there are going to be new steps to be taken. So there are two vectors to be applied. 
So I've been engaged in game producing and then body side uh, and then brain side and philosophy in the center. What does intelligence mean? This is another area I have been exploring. In terms of philosophy, uh, I am running a school on philosophy for AI, Western Oriental philosophies and the social sciences, how they are going to interact uh, with the AI. That's uh, something I have been working on for many years and I, I authored some books. And in particular, in the area of entertainment, uh, I am producing uh, machines uh, of AI for game users uh, in Asia and the Japanese Unos, they really are equate AI to life. Therefore, AI uh, is uh, translated into Hatsune Miku or Aibo or Tamagotchi. So I think that's what characterizes the, Jap the, uh, the Japanese users. But in the Western world, uh, there should be uh, the hierarchical uh, relationship is starting from God, human beings, and AI. Therefore, the learning and uh, the uh, academic study is based on this hierarchy. When we talk about AI, there's going to be a big difference uh, depending on the perception of users with regard and to the functions of AI. Uh, that is uh, what about uh, that is about the uh, the academic and study and more related and to the Western philosophy. But how is this going to be rooted uh, in the world? That kind of approach is going to be unique and to Asia and Japan as well. AI, oh, excuse me, human brain is called the natural intelligence, but AI is uh, called uh, a brain that is embedded in a machine. It is not only a matter of applications, um, but it is supposed to be a full set uh, AI. What does it mean with the body and the physical functions, and then on top of it, the brain and intelligence? That is called AI, I should say. For example, in the case of a robot, there is a body and a machine and software and then intelligence. There should be a kind of a hierarchical structure. And that said, we know a lot about the external world, the space, the physics. I think we have a very high level of accuracy that is applied, which I think uh, the data has been col uh, collected uh, in the previous speaker's uh, artworks and installations. But inside our cells, there is no unified theory that is applied. I think that is going to be a t uh, cause of some difficulty for creating AIs because we do not have a unified internal philosophy. Therefore, it is difficult for us and to create AI. As a result, we do not have the unified AI. And so everybody is now working on different kinds of AIs. But speaking of uh, principles of intelligence, and the bottom is supposed to be the physical world, and then comes uh, human bodies, then on top of it, intelligence. And on the tip of uh, the pyramid, uh, there is consciousness. And this is supposed to be the pyramid uh, model to be applied. As you can see, there are hierarchies, but at the same time, for example, uh, which is, has the highest uh, speed, and that's the physical world. Uh, at uh, the light speed. And in between, there is the layer of uh, bodies. Uh, it is the cell world, so somewhat the slower. But intelligence world, that is lowest, as a matter of fact. So if you're going to create AI, and if you're going to focus our efforts on intelligence area alone, then uh, it is uh, difficult to predict uh, what is happening in the light speed world. We have the body in between. Therefore, the body in can analyze uh, different kinds of uh, data. You may think that intelligence is taking that role, but in fact, uh, 
uh, interactions uh, with the physical world are absorbed by the body. Therefore, the body tries not uh, uh, avoids uh, the brain to think too much. Those uh, things uh, that uh, go against uh, the prediction, which is called attention, that kind of function is given by the body. So uh, the overall speed is relatively low. In order to create uh, AI, we have uh, to always uh, think about the body. Otherwise, the intelligence portion is going to be extremely exposed. It is difficult for it and to grasp the physical world. That is the whole structure uh, is uh, made. In the Oriental world, didn't we have the discussion on AI? Uh, we did. About 10, 000, uh, 1,000 years ago, we had the Buddhist uh, uh, theology, which is called, called um, consciousness only. So consciousness uh, has uh, layers, uh, and then there's going to be the conscious, and there are going to be understanding on top of that. Uh, this is how the consciousness uh, is structured. Uh, this is the tradition that we have uh, in Asia. That means intelligence is multi-layered, and that is uh, supposed to be one of the models that are applied um, by AI, for instance. Now, there's uh, the, the inputs and the uh, bodies and the output, and that's how the intelligence works. Subsumption architecture in English. For example, the robots uh, in, in your house they have this kind of a layer. The first one is reflective, and the second one is uh, thinking difficult things and the abstract thinking on top of it. So the higher you go up, uh, the, the concept is going to be more abstract. Um, but when it comes to a human body, uh, if something is uh, thrown at you, you have to avoid it. Therefore, that's how the uh, intelligence uh, should work. For example, uh, the information comes out of the external world, uh, and then decision is made, then comes a motion. And this kind of decision making is made in this kind of a structure. So this is um, synchronized uh, with the consciousness only structure. Therefore, in this way, in the oriental world, There are a lot of uh, intelligence and knowledge. Therefore, if we will be able to absorb them into AI study, then that is going to differentiate us uh, from the Western approach. As you can see, the infla information the flow uh, is established in this way. This is a captured flag. Uh, uh, this is a demonstration. These uh, agents uh, walking around in the world. Uh, they think and they take actions. Uh, this is a kind of a cycle. So how intelligence is linked with the world? Uh, there are three parts, a consciousness, unconsciousness, and the body. On top of it, as you can see, this is how it is structured. And more into the details, inside this structure, the language uh, is used in order to structure uh, the whole thing. So. This is called uh, agent architecture. In the animal world, uh, there is a, a word term uh, called uh, environment uh, world. There's going to be any uh, stimulus, and then uh, it uh, stimulates uh, uh, the, um, uh, the body. So this is uh, called, uh, uh, in German, Anwelt, or environment world. And this uh, environment world links the inner part and outer part. And the agent architecture uh, is also the same. And Avatamska uh, Sutra, according to that, all beings resonate with each other. There are interactions. This is how this uh, sutra uh, defines how the environment and the intelligence, how they are related. From different aspects, uh, there are those uh, literature uh, that explain the reasons. Therefore, uh, there are those uh, cases in which we only see unilaterally, but uh, when it comes to how the linkage between the environment and the intelligence, there should be Buddhism and other sciences. They 
up ultimately come up with the same similar answers and how the high intelligence uh, high artificial intelligence and human beings link together there are different kinds of uh, layers and uh, that divide the two first uh, consciousness layer and unconsciousness layer um, for example, uh, that uh, if some person behaves uh, differently from others and the physical interactions in these ways, we are linked uh, in the bottom, but at the same time, on top of them, there are different layers that link each other, language layer, uh, consciousness layer, and the body layer, for example. Now, we are linked with each other uh, at the, mul uh, the multi-channels, multi therefore, not only human beings themselves, but also human beings and the AI should be linked in that way. We often uh, think about uh, the top layer interactions, um, but uh, there are unconscious layers and body uh, layer, layer, for example, tactile uh, sensing between the robots and the human beings. I think this kind of relationship should also uh, be deepened. Uh, the whether uh, human animals uh, are constrained by the surrounding environment or independent of it, when it comes into the human beings, they are located on the top of this uh, diagram. They want to stay away from the physical world, uh, but at the same time, they also want and to be immersed in that kind of physical world. That's uh, what human beings uh, are represented by. And uh, so far, we uh, focus on the individual realms, uh, but AI should pay more attention and to the society in general. Human beings uh, meet with different people in order uh, to develop uh, their mind and the spirituality, uh, the this uh, the the self mindset. Uh, uh, is to be developed uh, through uh, such interactions. The same can be said about AI. There are different kinds of uh, methods to create such AI. Uh, one is symbolism, and the second is uh, connectionalism. It has a history of over 60 years. The character uh, intelligence or a divine and meta uh, uh, intelligence, it is called the meta AI, and navigation AI and character AI. There are three AIs. And DX uh, is a fetish term today. Digital world uh, is growing. It is being linked uh, with the real world. And in that way, there's going to be the links and that uh, tie them together. Therefore, AI is going to emerge in order and to uh, control the whole city, which is called the smart city. So in this kind of a layered structure, the whole city is uh, going to be controlled. The meta AI right here and navigation AI in this layer and then character AI in this layer. Therefore, game AI technologies can be applied and to city management. Uh, we have been accumulating uh, such knowledge for that purpose as well. Uh, there's going to be the augmented reality. That means uh, that uh, AI is going to be embraced uh, or uh, embrace the human beings. Um, so the human beings are going to make use of uh, the AI to enhance the augment, uh, the, augment uh, the human capacity. So going forward, those are the three areas where AI are going to be deployed. And with the interactions, we believe there's going to be the emergence of a new world. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Hi. Um, we have uh, heard uh, from the uh, from Alji as well as from uh, Miyake-san uh, talked about uh, the the outer space as well as the future. Uh, we have expanded uh, the scope of the discussion today. Now, as already mentioned uh, today, uh, whether it be uh, technology or AI and simulations and uh, uh, the LG's uh, um, expression using AI, you can see uh, that uh, there is uh, a significant expansion of scope. Now, uh, 
in the past one year, we have been talking about uh, uh, singularity, uh, but uh, now infectious uh, disease uh, is running rampant. Uh, and uh, how AI is used in this context uh, will be discussed and uh, also uh, discuss uh, simulation and prediction. How uh, will those uh, be uh, interacting uh, with society going forward? Uh, that uh, will be the topic uh, to be heard, uh, shared by uh, Hibino-san. Over to you, Hibino-san. I hope you can hear me. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Hibino. Now, as uh, already introduced, uh, with uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, to control, um, it means uh, that the prediction uh, technology is uh, uh, very important. Uh, it uh, uh, brought this uh, to the fore. Uh, in my presentation, I would like to take up uh, speci uh, specific uh, uh, examples and uh, talk about uh, the prediction of the future. Now, in terms of AI, as well as a uh, prediction of the future. When a place in society, uh, what is going to happen uh, is the topic I hope that uh, I can share with you uh, today. So uh, today, uh, these are the topics I'm going to discuss. Uh, first is the social uh, as aspect uh, of uh, future prediction technologies. Uh, the first uh, uh, is the self-destroying nature of the uh, prediction. Now, uh, with the COVID-19, uh, in the context of uh, Japan, uh, when uh, predictions uh, were uh, provided, uh, there was some bashing uh, that has taken place. Uh, this has uh, brought about uh, confusion uh, in society. Uh, what is important uh, in this regard uh, is to understand the prediction. Uh, when prediction uh, is announced, it is uh, a subject to the destiny of uh, um, self-destruction. So there is a self-destroying nature of uh, uh, prediction that I'd like to cover. The second point uh, is uh, the co-evolution of prediction and uh, society. This is uh, an important theme for uh, this session. With the prediction uh, technologies, uh, society will undergo change. And the system in the existing society, when it has formed, uh, with the new prediction uh, technology um, impact uh, will be brought about and uh, so sh society can also put uh, constraints in terms of uh, development of technology uh, therefore the interaction between the two uh, should uh, be uh, emphasized uh, before uh, COVID-19 uh, I have been working in the simulation for infectious diseases as well as uh, research uh, uh, with respect to uh, its relationship with society. I would also like to share that aspect uh, as well. Now, uh, let me further introduce myself. Uh, I um, have uh, specialized uh, in socio-psychology as well as uh, uh, scientific uh, technological sociology, uh, biotechnology, uh, consciousness, as well as uh, international comparison of the media representations, uh, areas that have been focused on. So I have uh, been involved in comparative studies uh, of uh, science uh, so far. Uh, but now I want to uh, delve further uh, into uh, the, the practice of uh, science. And that is the reason why I have been interviewing uh, specialists uh, uh, in Japan as well as in Taiwan uh, in the area of uh, infectious uh, diseases. I'm going to go back to my example once again. Um, prediction technology uh, had high expectations, uh, but uh, it was also subject to uh, bashing uh, in, in Japan. There was an uh, estimate given that uh, 400,000 people will die from COVID-19. And uh, this uh, uh, number had uh, uh, was taking on a life of its own. And that is the reason why it uh, was subject to a significant uh, criticism. But uh, this is not just limited to COVID-19. Uh, in the UK, similar example exists. Uh, when there was a, a pandemic of uh, food, uh, foot and mouth uh, disease, uh, simulation has uh, come up with estimate. And uh, this was also subject to a criticism, very similar to what has occurred here in Japan.
self-destroying uh, prophecy uh, is the characteristic that I mentioned. This is uh, was asserted by Merton, a sociologist. Uh, in this example, um, if we say that, uh, if we predict uh, that the uh, infectious disease will expand, uh, people take uh, preventive measures uh, or uh, take uh, uh, action and as a result of this action, um, infection will not spread. Uh, that means uh, that the, the prediction of uh, infectious disease uh, uh, becoming significant uh, will be proven false. By making a prediction, uh, people will uh, work uh, and act toward a different scenario. And by so doing, uh, it uh, destroys uh, the original prediction. And therefore, this is because of uh, the interaction with society, and it's a unique mechanism that uh, brings about uh, this flow. Uh, so, what is the problem? It's not a problem that uh, uh, it was uh, proved false, but uh, because uh, um, prophecies uh, have uh, different uh, dilemmas, uh, with the preventive measures, uh, a crisis could be avoided, uh, but uh, costs will be incurred. Uh, therefore, there will always be criticism toward uh, a prediction that was not right. And the cost has been incurred, and the preventive uh, impact of that uh, is not uh, clear. So uh, there is an uh, incremental cost uh, that will be incurred as a result. Now, uh, there is also another dilemma regarding prediction. Uh, the prediction of uh, future society uh, is assuming uh, several scenarios. Uh, there could be scenario A and uh, B, C, etc. Looking at uh, uh, different uh, options and uh, by comparing, uh, we will uh, identify which is more desirable. But uh, in society, uh, various events occur. But uh, there is only one uh, scenario that we can ultimately follow. And uh, uh, the with the action based on this relief, uh, the scenario will change. On the other hand, uh, in terms of the prediction of the uh, uh, future by showing uh, different uh, uh, predictions, uh, will uh, mean that uh, there will be different uh, options available. In that sense, a prediction uh, may feel uncomfortable in society in that regard. However, having said that, predictions are difficult to function uh, in society, as I have already mentioned. But uh, there could be a society where prediction uh, uh, destroying is not a problem. Let me give you the example of Taiwan that I studied. Uh, in Taiwan, uh, simulation uh, is uh, subject to trust, and uh, the government administration uh, is also um, using uh, simulations. But uh, it didn't happen from the past. Uh, it uh, happened uh, when uh, 2009 influenza A, HINI virus, uh, influenza occurred. So from that point onward, uh, the government uh, uh, placed uh, more trust uh, in simulations and uh, uh, started to use uh, simulations. Uh, for example, the model can be used uh, for uh, calculating uh, 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 vaccine as well as uh, masks. I did an interview and uh, the Taiwanese person said uh, that uh, um, having uh, the worst scenario simulated uh, uh, is uh, desirable. This is in contrast to what has occurred in Japan uh, when uh, the worst case scenario was uh, uh, introduced here in Japan. Let me continue with the Taiwan case. Now, before uh, the future prediction technology, uh, they seem to have been making headway in terms of uh, uh, in the cases database. And uh, this uh, was uh, introduced uh, uh, when SARS uh, was running rampant uh, in the country. Uh, therefore, they were able to visualize uh, tools uh, for uh, mask purchases, which was receiving much attention. 
so I, I tried to find out whether they had the uh, predictions then. A number of cases to be predicted uh, did not occur. A uh, specific uh, uh, predicted value for cases was not available, according to my research. Now, when we talk about prediction uh, in the social system, uh, it uh, can have uh, different uh, positionings. In the case of uh, Taiwan and Korea on the left-hand side, the know-how relating to infectious diseases uh, was very limited. Uh, therefore, they established a database and uh, predictions uh, was utilized uh, significantly. Now, uh, they are managing uh, utilizing uh, the database. On the other hand, for Japan, uh, Japan also has measures against uh, infectious diseases. Uh, we have uh, the uh, tracking system uh, led by the Public Health Center. However, regarding uh, patients, uh, database uh, was subject to uh, difficulty in the Japanese society. It means uh, that uh, we can only have uh, a very rough prediction and based on uh, that uh, prediction, we have to uh, rely on self-protection of individuals uh, in Japan. In other words, the prediction technology as well as social system uh, will uh, mutually uh, impact each other and form uh, something that is unique uh, to that uh, uh, country. So there are different ways of uh, thinking about this. We talked about layers today already. In the case of Japan, in the Japanese system, database is making headway and uh, based on that uh, predictions uh, can be made. This layer exists. And uh, there is also another layer uh, where the number that has been announced uh, will be subject to uh, distrust or fear. So it seems that within the society, we have uh, different uh, layers forming. It is a possibility. It can offer possibilities, but uh, it can also be a source uh, of uh, uh, confusion according to sociological thinking. Now let me try to uh, summarize. By making a predictions, uh, a scenarios will change. Uh, that means that uh, a prediction will um, turn out false. And, uh, it can be subject to criticism because uh, a significant uh, a preventive cost uh, will be incurred. Uh, but there are societies that are able to overcome this dilemma. And and this is uh, when there is a mutual interaction between the uh, preventing system and the uh, decision-making style. Now, uh, toward the free discussion, I would like to uh, uh, pose the question of uh, how uh, the future prediction technology uh, will be utilized in the after uh, COVID-19 uh, Japanese society. Uh, the uh, index as well as uh, uh, the analytic method uh, can be sporadically appearing updated to, to lead to a pluralistic uh, world or will the future prediction technology be s uh, something uh, that uh, people will not uh, uh, believe in and uh, uh, there could be uh, multiple type of uh, futures where uh, self-destroying uh, uh, a prophecy uh, will um, uh, multiply uh, and uh, become uh, visualized. Thank you. Thank you. The last uh, presentation, or the last slide, more specifically, uh, Professor Hibino uh, show, uh, showed, and that is going to be the starting point for the discussion. So I would like and to invite the comments from the three speakers with regard to the last slide. Uh, Mr. Nanjo, do you have any comments? I have a couple of questions, and maybe starting from the major ones. Now, as uh, Professor Hibino uh, explained, 
uh, understanding is somewhat limited. It is difficult. Well, idealistically, it is important. But as has been discussed uh, yesterday, the cluster uh, COVID-19 cluster strategies, uh, strategically speaking, they were OK. But there was a key word uh, as uh, the cluster. But there was a kind of a criticism because uh, it incited some kind of a bashing. Therefore, even if the content is the same, there should be a different term should be applied. Uh, or then bars and restaurants, those words as well. There is a scientific uh, position, uh, the aspect, uh, but there are also aspects relating to uh, human beings and society. So how different views can coexist? And there should be the coexistence of those different people with different views. Before COVID-19, in this uh, world, I think a singularity uh, will eliminate all the germs. And uh, there's going to be the age in which uh, the, the intelligence beyond human intelligence will be uh, born. But this kind of discussion is no more done in this uh, with the COVID-19 world. That is supposed to be the starting point for our discussion. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, Professor Hibino showed this uh, slide um, that the relationship uh, between the future prediction technology uh, and ours. I would like to invite Aochi-san and uh, Mr. Miyake to uh, comment on this slide. Okay. Aochi-san, would you please uh, make a comment uh, on the slide I have just shown to you? Professor Hibi knows the slide. And by the way, uh, okay. uh, I, I cannot see now. Thank you so much. So uh, the, the, for the first one, how will future the prediction technology be positive in the society of the after Corona? Um, a, a pluralistic world in which new indicators and analytical methods are particularly updated and reflected in behavior. There are a couple of questions, that, and then I will go to the one by one. It might be better. So for the for the first one. Uh, as you know, the, in the COVID, uh, the, the, the pandemic uh, time, uh, we, we have to we, we stuck in the, our houses. But uh, uh, as you know, technology changed the way about understanding to the physical worlds uh, or uh, the virtual worlds. Uh, I think the, 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 after the COVID, uh, that uh, the make, the, make the push to understanding to that reality is with, with technology. As I understood, I mean, the, in the pandemic uh, time, we have we had to the working remotely as a big team. We have to solve the problems without any touching or uh, the gathering play in somewhere. So it means uh, it, it is interesting uh, the practice uh, for making uh, that art uh, uh, knowledge with remotely with the people and with the technology. So definitely our society will change. Uh, and then the, every time the people, uh, people, the people worry about what if the, if we can get the, another virus uh, issues for the near future, right? So it means our reality is changing according to that issues. But uh, the, we are, you know, we are lucky. We are using the very good way for the technology for solving the, that kind of problems. Maybe with art. I mean, uh, technology and art will be a pair both uh, in the near future with that kind of issues. Um, so I am always the optimistic, and uh, I am always believe the technology and AI and data. So. Um, the, the, all that uh, things about the purposes of using the technology with a good way. I mean, the, for the optimistic way. So I am, I am, I am always thinking about that kind of optimistic 
the parallel universes using the art, AI, and technology for increase the, our society with a good way. And that's why I believe that this is uh, that was the good uh, um, practice in that pandemic issues. Uh, we could understand to the the how we can solve the, that kind of problems with remotely the technology. So this is the the, the positive perspective of the uh, the pandemic part for me. Okay. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there a positive example? Is there a specific positive example that you can share? Very san Yes, please. Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, the, the the positive thing is, you know, the the, the uh, we we lived a couple of calm down, and we had a time for understanding clearly by ourselves. What what is that exactly? What is the uh, what's supposed to be for the near future with the art? And for, for so I can make uh, I can make too many discussion with myself, understanding the future with the art in that kind of uh, issues. So this is a positive way, way for me. For the team, actually, for the team, uh, they can, um, they can uh, easily organize for making hybrid teamwork together in remotely, in digitally, you know? That's the huge practice, I guess. I mean, you're trying to put the impactful art installations around the world without any physical meeting, without any physical gathering with the techno technology. So uh, this is a positive thing for me. It means we can, we can, we can give more time for ourselves, for our, find the, our cure, you know, in, in, in our souls. So that's why that's the optimist and positive way for me. Having listened to Aoji-san's uh, remarks, uh, I think uh, he mentioned that there's the accumulation of uh, data and uh, there's going to be AI to be applied to the accumulation of data and that generates and creates art. So data being transformed into art. That's what he was talking about. Data. When does data be transformed into art? What is the trigger? And AI, does AI recognize art? Uh, can AI recognize the definition of art? I wonder how do you see this kind of aspect as a media artist? I would like to ask this question uh, of Aochi-san. Thank you, thank you. It is so, so very nice question. Um, I mean, when we, when we start in collaboration with the AI, uh, we didn't uh, accept anything for the final output, for the artistic decisions or something like that. You know, that was the so experiential process. We don't know any idea for the final result. So that's why we always thinking about uh, input and output. Uh, and then we are thinking about uh, as a package in one statement, making hybrid art with AI. This is machine and human collaboration for the hybrid art, you know. So for the process, we start in collected to data. That data looks like a one zero one zero very cold numbers, right? Uh, that, that numbers can understandable for the scientific people. But for us, we don't know anything about that numbers. But somehow, we, we already invented our workflow using to that data and in, in, including to the AI for making some uh, meaningful outputs which can we can use the, for our animation and artistic decisions. But the thing is the, the thing is when you're starting to making that experiential process, 
this is infinite possibilities for the for the, that experiments you know we are not looking for the scientific conclusions or something like that that's that's gave us the the freedom for making uh, impactful art installation it, actually we trying to integrate the different type of mediums we built the three different type of team one of them the data scientist team that team uh, has a responsibility getting different type of data from the online or from the the freeze data like a city data climate change data or natural data any kind of data as a text as a sound or as a picture the other team we built the ai coders and then sometimes we are collaborated with the academicians for understanding the that data with ai and making artistic decision working with the collaboration with human and machine the third team is about the animation part that team getting to ai output for transforming to as a data sculptures or paintings with custom softwares that we made the, the last one is the we are packaging all that vision as a hybrid public art with architectural experience to the audience that's the process and that's the, a little bit complex but you know every time we we ha- we have a new challenges and every time we have to invent a new workflow according to data or workflow I have another question. Does that mean that uh, what you are saying is that uh, AI alone cannot create art? There has to be interaction with humans. Otherwise, uh, art cannot be created. Is that a correct understanding? So can AI alone create art? That's my, that is my question. Does it need humans? Yes, but uh, the, 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 the big question is, AI can realize is it art when it creates the art, you know? It's about the consciousness. So the, the big question is, if the AI can make art with a purpose or, uh, you know, uh, can, they, can uh, AI realize the making art when it's making art so that's that's the question the as you know the ai the made by algorithms and mathematical codes right but the thing is that algorithm can realize itself in consciousness if we can do that yes we can say and uh, that ai making art with a purpose and uh, that ai can realize making art when they when they make art so uh, the, so uh, but in in this time this is machine and human collaboration Be- because of the we are putting the, a couple of artistic decisions with ai but after that ai making that art you know we are putting the just a couple of simple rules as artistic decisions that's it then after that ai starting to making the art So, uh, consciousness uh, and art creation, they are equivalent. Well, I think according to professor's uh, the presentation material, I think Aochi-san believes in three future futures, I should say. So, simulation is created, uh, there are, it is going to open up uh, different uh, scenarios uh, for the future. And as a result, the world is going to be enriched. So. I think I would like to invite uh, Mr. Miyake and to respond to those listed uh, questions uh, provided by Professor Hibino. First and foremost, when it comes to intelligence, intelligence uh, tends to fix the reality. In fact, uh, in subconsciousness, uh, we predict different scenarios for future. For example, walking in the woods, 
And if you hear something across the grasses, uh, maybe a stone it was thrown, or a beast uh, is out there, or something different. Now, uh, you uh, will imagine the different scenarios uh, before you can confirm the reality. This kind of a situation is going to put a lot of load on the human mind. Therefore, humans uh, want and to uh, give conclusion to that reality. Under the COVID-19, what is the truth and reality? Uh, there are a lot of uh, discussions and there are a lot of uh, predictions as well. If you're going to watch uh, TV shows, uh, there are different approaches. Uh, and then, uh, depending on the media, you have uh, different scenarios. And that is uh, having and imposing a lot of load on the human beings. So humans uh, want to select out of them. Uh, the the reality in some cases and can be suppressed, but uh, under these circumstances, that uh, tension is quite high, and no one and can uh, deny that real uh, those are scenarios. Therefore, a gloomy situation does exist. As for AI, uh, it will serve as unconsciousness of the world. The AI currently uh, augments the reality that is uh, visible, like uh, uh, Go or uh, games uh, uh, or uh, stock price prediction. So in this kind of uh, real world, uh, AI provides a functional uh, functions. But at the same time, like for example, uh, that the human beings uh, uh, grasp the reality that may turn out, go into reality out of uh, 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 the five percent of uh, out of uh, hundred uh, percent. Uh, so if it is going to get imminent, the alert should be uh, go off. This is going to be the third line. Some of the reality that is not going to be visualized. It is not going to be uh, taken up uh, in the human world. But AI uh, could uh, think of uh, or simulate and uh, calculate uh, what would uh, actually appear in the world. Therefore, there are going to be multiple uh, the scenarios uh, or the most likely scenario that may replace the reality. That kind of uh, competitive uh, models uh, should be supplied uh, by the AI. I think the enhanced uh, or augmented uh, intelligence intelligence is going to be provided by the AI. So once uh, it is necessary to take up in the reality, they will be given by the AI. That is the future world I can envision. Uh, it seems that uh, you're in the area of uh, quantum physics. Uh, so I think with technology, uh, it uh, can be brought to bear. How can this be recognized by uh, humans? How can it be uh, observed by humans? Uh, will uh, decide uh, how we will be living in the future. So it seems multipass it was mentioned. So different uh, uh, futures available for us. Uh, going forward and uh, we have uh, talked about the environment uh, world and uh, um, living organisms are viewing uh, the world differently so the truth in the eyes of ai the reality in terms of ai what is that uh, is it also a multipath for ai as well so if you have different um, ais the reality of AI, are they all different? So AI is not objective. Is Objective AI is not possible. I don't think uh, uh, that is possible. So does that mean that in terms of thinking, the uh, ultimate truth uh, does not exist in this world? James Radley said that AI is based on learning, and uh, there is uh, uh, always the human bias of the past that will be reflected, whether it be photographs, uh, the whites and the blacks. Uh, it is not the AI issue. It's this, uh, based on, it is biased based on the uh, what uh, AI has learned. So uh, the scope of learning of AI, based on that, it cannot be objective. And uh, 
with tooling and uh, thereafter uh, research uh, has been made uh, and uh, we are gaining insight of what the people humans have done in the past and uh, the prediction uh, cannot be separated as uh, hibino san has mentioned does that mean that uh, ai comes from big data so in each country, in each ethnic group, and depending on the culture, uh, it is uh, big data accumulated that will be different. According to Miyake-san, uh, the, um, I think uh, there, uh, there is uh, the environmental world for each AI. And based on the environmental world, uh, the uh, world understanding uh, will differ. So it's an uh, uh, understanding-based uh, environmental world. Uh, exists uh, uh, similar to the natural world. And Miyake-san, you mentioned uh, that uh, the city image, uh, you talked about this. So I would like to hear more about that. So cities will be managed uh, and uh, uh, monitored uh, by uh, AIs and uh, it uh, will be mobilized uh, by AI further. Does that mean that the uh, is it going to be parallel world to our lives today? Because there are different um, correct answers. Uh, and, uh, I think it will lead to a crash. And in fact, it is occurring. Rasan, would you like to answer this question? In terms of philosophy, uh, there's um, existence within the world. Uh, so uh, AI is not able to view uh, from completely outside. Uh, from their perspective, uh, they are viewing the world. And, but uh, in terms of environment world, uh, this is a biological world. Uh, in the AI world, it is referred to as frame. So uh, it uh, is uh, um, uh, infinite uh, factors, uh, but uh, in the uh, biological world, uh, it will be uh, finite. Uh, so, when even you have a big data, uh, there could be connectivity and uh, interpreted, uh, and they could be uh, connected differently and uh, interpreted differently, and sensors could uh, differ uh, amongst the countries as well as uh, researchers. So, what uh, kind of uh, reality you are trying to bring to the fore uh, will be different, uh, whether it be humans or AIs. Uh, it depends on your focus. Uh, even if you try to be objective, uh, there will be differences. And in the city environment, uh, there is a scale for time and space. And it is a hierarchical uh, space, as well as time is also hierarchical. So if it's uh, like if, you, if it's an AI looking at uh, uh, vehicles or roads, or if it's an AI looking at uh, uh, Shibuya World or Mirato World, the time scale will differ from AI to AI. And time and space, uh, which scale um, to be identified uh, will mean that uh, there will be a multilateral um, perspective of uh, the city. But uh, they will work together and uh, and to protect uh, uh, the um, the order uh, in the city, the most supreme AI will be uh, consolidating uh, the uh, AIs below them. That is uh, the most uh, ideal uh, AI. <laughs> well, originally, when it comes to ICF, the urban problems and creation and innovation. And uh, those uh, experts on those uh, on these topics uh, uh, started this uh, initiative, and so uh, with a lot of interest, I have uh, listened to his uh, views. We are running out of time, unfortunately. Lastly, I think Professor Hibino, I would like to give the microphone and to you, and uh, based on the comments given by the other uh, panelists in the sl in the slide slido. I think uh, that uh, there's going to be the Google, for example, is going to play a huge, again, gigantic role in terms of the prediction for the future. So uh, would you please uh, touch upon that aspect because there is such a common drop um, by the, one of the viewers uh, on the slide though. First, my own prediction. 
or conventional and traditional uh, the predictions, uh, they will have uh, any more chance and to, of survival. Therefore, my view is between bullet point two and three. And I have got some clues um, from Miyake-san's uh, comments. I think uh, when it comes to the infection, the pandemic, uh, if there is going to be any talk about the outbreak, and that will give uneasiness to people. Therefore, uh, some of the concerns uh, are going and to be expressed uh, in a hidden manner. That's what I have uh, thought, having listened uh, to the other panelists' uh, the comments. Uh, so uh, the prediction is going to run on the background. Now, with regard to Google, and uh, those uh, giant players. I think uh, the platform uh, platform provider is going to be uh, play an important role. Uh, for example, data is accumulated by Google, and the information will be given power once it is uh, collected in large number. And it happened to be Google this time. But for example, in other cases, uh, some of uh, nation, uh, the states, uh, governments, uh, and I think uh, uh, the AI on the top of the hierarchy, I think every government is uh, trying to invent. And that may uh, control the many other things uh, uh, around the world. So going forward, uh, what the entity uh, is going to put in place that kind of uh, AI, whether it is going to be a single company uh, or a group of companies and other entities, it is going to be a competition. And uh, we have to avoid a situation. This is going to develop into uh, the, uh, the 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 power uh, grabbing the power. I think it should be a more cooperative and collaborative one. That will give us uh, more uh, joy and to the future prediction. Thank you very much. I think uh, we have run out of time. Then we would like to proceed to after session after this. Now first, we would like and to uh, close this uh, breakout session. Uh, once again, thank you very much and for your participation. And my thanks also go to all the participants and viewers.